So it comes down, yes, and it rotates, yes. And then, remember, so the little shoulder's like that, yes, so the, the head's like that. Then the baby's head extends, yes, yeah, remember? And then remember these shoulders turn, yes. As the head turns. That's right, that's right. And then you can gently guide the baby's down and deliver that anterior shoulder. Yes. And then you can bring it up and deliver the posterior. That's and right. And then the mother can comfort the baby. Yeah. yeah. The reason that I'm in midwifery is that I'm discovering there's a beautiful moment of trust that exists between a midwife and um, a mother about to give birth. What we've just been doing is particularly thinking of the safety of the mother and baby, and you're enhancing that safety with your knowledge and skills and developing your skills. But what I noticed some of you also doing was particularly taking care of the emotional well-being of the mother. And there were interactions where you were actually thinking, what is her need? Does she need me at this moment to speak or does she need me to be silent? You were also thinking of who is giving her support. And some of you who are being husbands or partners supporting were giving the support so the midwife didn't come in strongly with her support but just with her instruction at the right moment. The reason I want to be a midwife is I want to be a part of a woman's most fantastic experience of her whole life. Having a baby is not an illness, it's not an operation. It is a normal event of a normal person and therefore you want people around you. And uh, damn the instruments and all the clever medicine, it, it's people you want and that's what matters most in childbirth. To be a good midwife one has to be uh, a, a practitioner in her own right, in the sense that she is looking after two lives and she has, has to have the ability to assess labour as it progresses and take the necessary steps to safeguard the fetus and mother. I think it's important that the expectant mother must be given choice as to where she would like to have her baby. Okay. If it's at home or in hospital. Shall we do this one? Do you want to use my left or my right? This one. This one, please. I want you to do yours as well. <laughs> okay. Right. Baby's still so active. Oh, that's great. That's what we want to hear. It keeps me awake at night. All right. If it wasn't active, then we'd be worried. So okay, I've had a really, really good pregnancy. Absolutely no problems from the word go. We talked about having a home confinement because I had a really nice pregnancy and a lovely labour last time. It was very quick, had no problems, didn't need any pain relief and thought it would be really ideal, especially because of Lucy now, to have this baby at home. So I'd talked about it previously with Alistair and he wasn't so keen. He was worried maybe for me if I couldn't have coped with the pain, also if there was a problem with the baby. But the more we talked about it, and of course I reassured Arthur that if there was a problem in the labour or at any time, then we would we would go to hospital. I wasn't going to stay at home no matter no matter what. And because I was so keen, he came round to my way of thinking. And since we've got to know Andy, and he's got to know Andy a lot better because she's been doing all my antenatal care, his fears have totally subsided and he's really ready and as excited as I am about having the baby at home now. What so. position are you thinking that you'll have? I thought I would sit with the wedge behind me, yes. upright against the sure. back of the sofa, sure. just on the crawling yeah, mat. Because I'm, I, I don't mind whichever position you choose. I don't mind. I liked the idea of squatting, but I think it's got to be something that you've always done and it's just yes. not a position that I regularly attack. I'm quite flexible, whichever, whatever suits but you. But I'd be sitting on the floor with just leaning against the, no problem. the cushion. As well. And now Andy comes to my home once a week, which is nice for me and also because I've got Lucy, my little two-year-old daughter, she's got to know Andy, so Andy and Lucy have been able to build up a relationship which, yes. which has been very special for them Hi. as well. And also, of course, Alistair has got to know Andy better, which is vital mm -hmm. for when I do go into labour. And he needs to have a lot of trust in her, like I do. Is that right? Yeah. <sighs> Another one? Another one? That's so, one three, three in ten, roughly. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> what do we go through, eh? I know. 
Oh, it's seven million blood and not a woman. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't know I'm in any pain, I don't think. No. She's going for pizza with my mum. Right. And then she's going to visit somewhere. And then, yeah. She says, well, it kept out of the way. Mm. How long do you think it's going to be? A couple of hours? Could be. Mm. Um, the head is quite low. And um, the cervix is a face. And once the contraction speeds up, it, it shouldn't be too long. Before, before, before delivery. Mm. You'll be alright. Yeah, so. Love it gently for mummy. Gently. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's making mummy feel better. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, that's nice. Another, give him another kiss. Ooh. Oh, Go and have a lovely time and I'll see you later. What about Lucy? I'll see you later. You going to get back? She hasn't got to. Yes, she's got some sheets. So if I put some newspaper down mm -hmm. and one sheet down. Okay. The is, so. <laughs> she's more or less from here to the toy. Hmm? Oh right. Yeah, Let's open that. This way. Oh. No, put a sheet. We'll put the sheet down as well. It's not here yet. <laughs> is it pain more down here? It's back? all the time. No pain in my back at all. Just all the pain in my back. And all the pain is just here. Mm -hmm. All in my pelvis, just in my mm -hmm. pelvis, just crushing. Because I always thought the pain was kind of... Because mm -hmm. that's how they teach you, isn't it? Right. And you think it's, it's engaged so long. OK. Oh. Oh. Hmm. Say. It's been engaged a long time. You would have thought there you wouldn't feel the pain mm. as much. That's all the, so pain. all the pain. All the pain is in the pelvis. Mm. Just because someone's got my pelvis in. Yeah. Clamp. Yeah. I don't have any pain up here. No pain no, at all. It's all up here. It's all right down And yet it's very hard. Nothing. Don't feel a thing up there. Maybe I've got no nerves up there. <laughs> <laughs> Is this baby going to be born at 8 o'clock? No. What time was Lucy born? Quarter to nine, Lucy was born. And it's been so similar. They're probably born exactly the same day. Probably the same way. It's an old one. Yeah, but I'm, I'm all right doing this, actually. New method. Penny. <sighs> okay, well, Grand Old Duke, if you all come, Lucy's soon. Oh, they're coming fast. Oh, I would have to push it. Come over this side, sweetheart. Oh, I think it's best um, because it's protected here. Oh, really? You want you to, to push just there? Oh, help. Absolutely. Help so me. Oh, help I've got me. You, I've got you. Uh, Me away. Ah! Okay. Ah! Pant. Let's oh. get it slowly. Pant. 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 I just feel for the cord and it is around the neck. Don't push. Through. Don't push. Don't push it. Oh. Put your head, put your put your bottom down, sweetheart. Put, down. Down. put your bottom down. Just gently. Put your bottom down. Put your bottom down. Bottom down. Don't push. No. no, don't push don't. it. Not yet, not yet. Don't push oh, it. What's happening? Just don't, 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 push, don't push. Oh. Just don't push it. Uh, don't push. Don't push. push, push. It. You've got the control. Don't push. 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 Don't
this guy. Well, he is she. There you go. Oh, it's oh. a little. What's this girl? What's this girl? Time, oh. time, somebody. Twenty plus exactly. Oh. Oh. Good girl. Oh. We wanted a girl. No, I you're outnumbered, Alistair. I mean, oh. that's a little bit. Oh, oh God, that, that was fast at the end. I wasn't expecting oh. it that quickly. Oh. It's like Lisa, isn't she? Oh, well, of you. You're in pain now. Oh. Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, but she's, she's definitely another Lucy. <laughs> she looks like Lucy, Lord. Mm. Yeah, she looks just like, like Lucy. Oh, oh do you want to take it out? out? I got one. Do you want to take it out? It's well contracted, actually. Do you want to take it out? I'm taking your finger. Just cough. Mm. Just cough. Mm. Just cough. 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 Okay, so if I do this, you can go to the bar. Oh, All right, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I couldn't have been more accurate. Oh, what? Six four. Yes, I said six five. Mm. Well mm. done. She's so good. Yep, six four. Six four. You, you really like your sister, Lucy? Oh, that's lovely, cuddles. That's lovely, cuddles. Do you want to cuddle mummy? Come on, me cuddle Lucy. Mm. Oh, love you. Put on weight very quickly in the first couple of months, which was surprising because first time round that hadn't happened. Um, but I didn't really think too much of it. And when I had my scan, I explained to the, um, the lady doing the, doing the scan that I felt rather bigger than I had done previously. And she said this was quite normal for a second pregnancy. But having turned on the scan, she said this was because there were two. Yeah. <laughs> There was always a question that a caesarean would be necessary because the first twin was breech and had been for some time. And as, as time goes on, so there's much less room for them to be able to turn round. And the bigger the twins got, then the more difficult it was going to be to do anything other than have a caesarean. You're going to feel a little bit of pushing your back, maybe a bit sharp. If you're uncomfortable, just let me know. Okay? There was a choice as to whether or not to have a spinal, an epidural, or a general anaesthetic, and I went for the spinal anaesthetic. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, over the next sort of three to five minutes, you may start to feel a tingling in your toes. A sort of nerve in your feet as well. It may come on very I didn't feel a thing, um, either before or during the operation. I couldn't have told you what what was happening at all, um, and my recovery afterwards was so quick. I have to say, I recommend it to anybody. <laughs> well, one of the sensations of anything under local is that you can feel things. It doesn't completely obliterate sensation. Yeah. You can feel pushing and pulling and tugging. Yeah, I've got my head Yeah. Well, that's the sort of thing. You feel pushing, pulling and tugging. Mm. But what you shouldn't feel is pain, mm. right? You're going to feel a lot of pushing, pulling and tugging over the next sort of half hour or so. Um, one of the ladies upstairs described to me afterwards, it's a bit like somebody doing the washing up in your tummy. Mm. I'll warn you when the baby's about to come, mm -hmm. what they'll feel is um, <coughs> that, we'll tell you, but you'll also, they'll start pressing very hard up underneath your, under your rib cage here. Mm -hmm. Very hard, and that's to push the baby out. Obviously there'll be one, and then there'll be a second one. Doing all right there? Yeah, I think so. Doing very well, actually. Uh, did you have an epidural last night? I had nothing. You had nothing? She couldn't even manage the gas and air last night. Oh, that was very heroic. Well, we went off to a, um, an antenatal class. Sorry. But you went into labour in 1980. Yes. Well, I must say, I've never heard of anybody doing that before. That's amazingly well organised. Oh, it's an ideal place. There's a bit of tugging there. Getting very close now. Right. We're getting ready to put the screens around in a minute. Right, Debbie, can you see what it is? Right, you have a... Well, that's the girl. That's the breach she runs. Well, that's right. Oh, good. We have a bum well delivered right? here. And she's, she's absolutely late. beautiful, although I don't think anybody else would say that. <laughs> <laughs> Except her father. <laughs> oh, beautiful. <laughs> I'm <laughs> 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 
Marvin yeah. salted, yeah. apart from that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay, now we're going to go with the second one. Right? <laughs> and it's a little boy. boy. Oh, well so done, Mum. Well done. Well done. Well done. Congratulations. Congratulations indeed. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't miss seeing it, seeing them come out. <laughs> it's wonderful. They're beautiful. Well done. Where's this Victoria Mary? Fine. Oh dear. What a good. What a rude awakening. What a rude awakening. How funny is this? Oh, it's gorgeous. There we go. Oh. 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 The young heir and master. Did you forget how little they are? Didn't I know. Very grown up having three children, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. <laughs> it wasn't quite intended that way, was it? Great. Fantastic. Can't believe it, really. I thought the staff was fantastic. And the anaesthetist was tremendous in the way he talked us through it. He kept us uh, occupied. It reminds me of what I sometimes want the pilot of an aircraft to tell me when we go through turbulence, that, you know, it's actually going to feel a bit lumpy rather than finding you feel the lumps and then he tells you it's all right. It's nice to know in advance what's going to happen and what you're going to feel. A careful, clear explanation definitely improves the quality of the whole procedure for the mother in that uh, she understands what's going to happen, it happens when it's expected. If there are any problems, she knows that they're likely to occur and then isn't frightened by them. It was all very quick and very painless and um, just amazing really to see it all happening. Sort of not not participating in the set quite the same way as, as last time. Hmm? I think last time I didn't, I didn't watch, did I? No. I sort of waited till the baby was actually quite clear before I, before I saw it. And this time actually seeing them come out, albeit with some assistance, is remarkable. That's it, she's going in. And he's fallen off. Let's see if we can get him back on. I'm not sure he's that interested. Have we had enough? How's feeding going? Oh, it's coming along. And they're sort of mixing bottles and breasts. Yes. It is a, it is a double load, uh, literally, and um, you have to get used to that. Um, many women can make quite enough milk for two babies, but it takes a time to get to there, and you don't yes. do it immediately. And uh, what you mustn't do, if I may suggest, is be impatient. No. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to accept that it does take time and the body has to get used to it. You know. When are you going home? I'm hoping to go home this evening. Oh, that's nice. Yes. You're yeah. all ready at home? Um, yes, should be. <laughs> are you happy with that, Jane? It, that's fine. The pediatrician's just checking the baby because the girl was a bit jaundiced, but that's mm -hmm. fine. The wound looks beautiful, good. so that's good. good. Well, my congratulations. Thank you very, very much. Well. Nice to see you. Thank you. God bless you. We'll get home. Thanks. Goodbye. We do feel very proud. Um, we certainly very lucky to have two lovely, healthy babies who, um, so far, are quite well behaved. The relationship between the midwife and the obstetrician, I would like to think, is a close one. They ought to be equal partners looking after women so that the midwife is looking after the normal antenatal and delivery care, and the obstetrician is helping uh, look after the things that don't go perfectly normally. Uh, and it's very important that it be kept so. The midwife is a trained practitioner in her own right. She is good at looking after normal women. She's good at detecting problems and can then call help from the obstetrician. However, the obstetrician can't quite be a fire brigade and just called in for the immediate uh, problem, just a, a la moment as it happens. He ought to be also taking a supervising role in this. The two can't work without the other, They're like the two limbs of letter A, they lean upon each other. This is the baby's head down the bottom here, right down the bottom. Oh, it is low, isn't here, it? yes. We come up. Here's the body. 
And this is the heart beating away here. Yes. See that? You see the spine here on the top. Again, the fluid is slightly increased, as we've seen on previous mm -hmm. scans, but there's no indication that I mean, the bladder and the stomach and the kidneys look fine in the baby. So that's fine. So what I need to do now is actually just document the measurements and check how much it's grown since the last scan. Okay, let's measure you. You know the old centimetres. I do, yeah. Is it a centimetre a week? Centimetre a week, yeah. So although you're 37 to 38 weeks, that actually only measures 33 centimetres, so it is a bit small. Right. Having been monitored because this baby wasn't growing enough, um, the baby is not growing quite as much as they thought, or rather the baby, I think, has even stopped growing. Um, I've got a few things to get used to. 34 weeks, which showed that your baby was growing along a line that 3% of babies will be on or below, okay? That means it's heading for being a smallish baby anyway. There's been very little growth over the last three weeks or so. And I think that because we've been concerned about this baby and watching you all the way along, and you're now mature in the sense that the baby's 37 and a half weeks, 38 weeks gestation, we should be considering inducing you sometime soon this week. Right. The first thing we do is give you some prostaglandin gel. And that's just an internal examination, which we do the crack of dawn, 6 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. on the labor ward. And we put some gel into the vagina. That absorbs and hopefully will soften and ripen up the cervix and put you into labor. I was so brave and thinking that I had such a high pain threshold, I kept thinking that I could keep going and going and going and going without any help. And I kept being told that I wasn't dilating, so I thought, well, I better keep going a little bit longer. And when I couldn't keep going anymore, that's when I asked for my epidural. Whatever you do, try not to bring your arms anywhere close to I'm cleaning. All right? I'll stay here with me. Okay. Okay. All done. Mm -hmm. More local coming up. Now, from now on, you'll feel a lot of pushing and prodding. That's the work that we've got to do now. Okay. That's it. Right, you can relax your knees if you want to. We've mm -hmm. done the job here. All right. Well done. The worst thing is when these straps come off. <laughs> <laughs> On oh, my very hairy back, yes. Yes. I feel terrible pain. There we go. Favourite noise, Judith. You can hear anything in your sleep now, what I need to do is because the baby's protesting a little bit. Alona stayed with me in and out the whole time, and she was great. So, in order to get a good tray, is to put a clip on the baby here. I'll show it to you before I put it on. She was very encouraging and very loving, and she was obviously very experienced. I wouldn't have suggested it if it has been a normal induction or anything. Let's see how it goes like that. She was marvellous. Right. Well, that's still quite painful. Is it? Well, because you're having a contraction there. All right, just if you keep your bottom still. Oh. Okay. okay. Are these now full blown labour contractions that you'd have had if you'd just gone normally? Normally, yeah. Yeah? Mm. Right. Push it downwards. Is it the leg bottom down, one? bottom down. That's it. Give me another one. Now. In again. 
Big. Hold it, chin in the chest, and push right down. Keep it coming. Right oh, down the bottom. Come on, come on, push Harder. Push, push, push. Really come hard. Come on. All right. Okay. Relax. Probably got one coming soon. Can you feel it building up? Oh. Yeah? All right, hand yeah. behind your thumb. Yeah. Chin on the chair okay. and push right down the bottom. Come on, keep pushing, keep pushing, That's keep pushing, right. keep pushing. Really right down the bottom. Quickly, another one. Oh. Oh. Come on, push away that pain, Judy. Get angry oh, with that on. pain. You want to push that pain away. Come on. Harder, come on. Good girl. Come on. A little bit more. Go on. A little bit more, on. Judy. Give it a, Give it a little bit more. Go on. Bring it round. Okay, let's have a rest. Big push, Judy. Big push. Go on, one more. Good Real. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Good girl. Go on. Okay. Can you manage another one? If you can, come on. Push down, push down, push down. Come on. Come on. Good girl. Okay, have a rest, have a rest. Alright. Okay, she's off the monitor now, alright? So don't worry, you don't hear the... She's there. There's a lot of hair. Yeah. Hand, 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 hand. Go on, you've got a hand. Good girl. Go on. Go on. Go on. Don't push at all. The cord's around the neck, okay? Oh, it's all there, girl. Okay. 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 Hold on. Gorgeous. She's there. She's there, she's all there. Just slowly, pen slowly now. Just pen Hands slowly. Again. Watch. Look in your eyes. Go on. Go on. Go on. There you are. Oh. Oh. There she is. Oh, oh my god. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, 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 The first thing that I remember yeah, was Stephanie being put on top of me and then she tried to feed and it's just incredible that they, they know it's instinct. She knew how to feed straight away. And then that's how we discovered there was a small problem. She started choking and as a very inexperienced mum, I thought it was just mucus and the nurse helped me and she was aspirated and given back to me again. And she, she wasn't feeding. And um, having your baby taken away from you on the first night and taken down to special care, it's probably the most traumatic thing that any mum could have because other than a photograph, she wasn't with me. They told me that it was just, you know, one of those things. They thought she might have a little chest infection and they would just look after her that night. And she was kept in there till the next day and I was told that I could go down whenever I wanted and, and see her. Um, they then found, 24 hours later, that she actually had what's called an esophageal atresia, which is when the esophagus is a closed-end tube and doesn't link up to the stomach. Well, I'm a bit more experienced now, and in, it turned out to be something not quite as major as we'd imagined, but at the time, I was told that she'd need an operation, and to both myself and to Nigel, it was just terribly traumatic. She got taken the next morning, I think it was Friday morning, to Great Ormond Street, where, well, they've seen these things. It's not that common, but they've seen it all before. They put you at ease. I was sobbing my eyes out. Um, and she was taken and seen by the consultant there. And that same evening, she was operated on. And she came back two and a half hours later. A couple of days later, she was feeding. And she's been home a week. And she's feeding regularly every four hours. And she's a little angel.
an informed woman will have a much better time and will understand what's happening and will realize the points of the labor far better than someone who has closed her mind and gone into it with, uh, like a closed book, shutting her mind out. I don't want it to happen. It's going to happen, and babies do come, I'm afraid, at the end of nine months, and they're able to learn about what's going to happen is excellent. If one is not well informed, one become over anxious as to how, you know, labor is being progressed. But once you, you, you're being put in the picture as to the stages of the labor, what is going on, how we're going to deal with uh, any complication, one come to terms with it much better. During um, this bird, I think I, I was able to cope with it because of my background of being a midwife and being an older mother and because I was kept well informed as to what they were going to do and all about the labor. My previous four labors started spontaneously and lasted between four to six hours. This time I'm being induced because of my age and the size of my baby. Induction was started at 10 a.m. by inserting the first dose of prostaglandin gel. Is it cold? But four hours later, my cervix had not dilated at all. And then, yeah, just for a minute or so. Oh, it's still quite, quite tight, isn't it? It's good. So it's just another half an hour to go while we assess you. Yeah. In the afternoon, I was given a second gel, and everybody yeah. hoped that that would get things moving. So it's still fairly close, actually. It's much more effaced, so it's thin, but it's, it's really barely taking my fingertip. Give it a good stretch. I think breaking your waters is going to be impossible. Lift your bottom up and I'll take this wet one. Breaking your waters is really going to be impossible because the cervix is still very tightly shut. But it has changed and it's softened up, which means that the hormones that we've given you are actually doing their job. No. It is very likely right. that these contractions that you're getting will carry on and they will establish itself overnight. Mm -hmm. My plan would be to leave you overnight. If, if things carry on, they carry on. If they don't, fair enough. We'll do the same again tomorrow, put some more of the, the hormone jelly in, in the front passage. If that opens the cervix, all well and good. If it doesn't, we may then consider at that stage changing our plans and doing a cesarean section. I see no reason now to do a cesarean, because the heart rate's fine, you're fine, okay? So there's no problem. I think we just wait and see. All right? But usually, people who've had babies before, get on and go into labour of their own accord in the middle of the night. We usually see about four people here. Yeah. Okay. By the following day, labour hadn't progressed and I was given two more prostaglandin gels. Kind of a bit tired. That pain doesn't seem to be doing any. Although my cervix was still not dilating, the gels were bringing on strong, painful contractions. I think, you know, we can't really take any risk, do we? Oh, I, I think I have told my colleagues here, uh -huh. we need to bail out. Okay. It's a big baby, it's not in the pelvis, neck of the womb is closed, mm -hmm. you are 45. Mm -hmm. The last thing I want to see something going wrong, which I should have actively prevented. We yeah. tried very hard yeah. yesterday and today. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah, I do. But doing cesarean section in 1993 mm. is not the end of the world, is it? Mm. No. Do you understand? Really. But, but I think you have tried. 
which wasn't a very you know sort of um, um, decision which you have made just like that without mm -hmm. putting any thoughts into no. it no. we tried and it is not happening and okay. you are at term aren't you yeah. i don't really think we should leave you in this state okay okay mm -hmm. i was thinking whether we should do it tomorrow but the way you are i think mm -hmm. we should go ahead and do it now so okay. we'll organize everything for you i think it's kinder to you that way mm -hmm. okay all right yeah. <laughs> I didn't really want to be awake during my cesarean section, but if I had had a general anesthetic, my husband would not have been allowed to stay with me in theater. So I had the cesarean on the spinal anesthesia. I was glad to have been awake during the operation as I saw and held my baby right away. Okay, I'm going to pick the children, so I'll be back in a minute. Okay. <laughs> See you in a while. <laughs> the most important thing for me at the end of uh, this uh, pregnancy was to have a, a normal, healthy baby. I, I really wanted to have a normal delivery, but for me it, it didn't work out, so I end up having a caesarean section. And I feel that the important thing is that women must be well informed of labor, what can go on, and the different outcomes one has to, t to take if labor doesn't progress normally. And for me, I was glad at, it, at the end that I had a healthy, normal baby to show for, for it all. I thought I was going through the changes. I mean, it was all the symptoms, which I now know the same as when you're having a baby. The hot flushes, middle-aged spread, being tired. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I know I should have known beforehand, but it was after Christmas and I suddenly felt movement. And I knew that it was more than indigestion or anything else, and it was actual baby kicking. And then I, of course, had the trouble of telling my husband so on the Tuesday after Christmas, I plucked up the courage to tell him that I was pregnant. <laughs> and then we had to tell the children, which I didn't believe. <laughs> I couldn't believe that she was pregnant, not at her age. <laughs> <laughs> Bid is such a short pregnancy, we haven't really had time at the hospital to discuss a lot of things. Um, they've been going on so much, you know, how wonderful. And to think that I've gone through five months without any problems, even, I mean, during that time, I even fell over. If I'd known I was pregnant, I don't know what I would have done. But I've had nothing, no problems with the blood pressure or anything. And we just haven't had a chance to talk about what is going to go on when I actually have the baby. <coughs> Nine? Nine. 
surprised how quick it was. It was just so very quick. I know. She didn't want to hang around, did she? <laughs> Can you tell me what is the matter with your daughter? Well, she's going to sleep. <laughs> but you saw this excitement. Oh, oh, yeah. Next week when they go out to dinner. Well, that's it. You see, I'll be going indoors and saying, "Here we are, Robert. You're home sit. from school. Take the baby. That's it. <laughs> taking her walking. <coughs> All right. Is that your first time? Yeah. <laughs> and I hope it be a long one before it happens again. <laughs> Baby over to Dad, if you want to go and get a drink or anything. Right. You're all right. It was so quick. You, did, you know, when she she just said like, you saw the head well, there straight done. away. You saw the head there straight away when you come back. So um, really, if I say from ten o'clock, really. So it's well, from quarter to ten, you know, I think so you could say good. that about an hour. You know, I mean, it was literally that quick. And she just grabbed over the baby and said, "Well, give it another good push." I've got the proof now. Yeah, you've got the proof. I've got a mental block completely on this, didn't I? Yeah. Hey, I can't put a mental block on it now. I definitely was pregnant. I've definitely just had a baby. <laughs> I mean, it, it is. I mean, it is a miracle, and uh, can recommend it. As long as you've got someone to carry on while you get you a couple of hours sleep, then that's <laughs> <laughs> well, amazing. But it, it so if any good. ladies come up and tell me their menopause has kicked them in the stomach, I can say it's highly recommended. <laughs> as okay. long as they've got some older children to help. That's Absolutely. it. <laughs> have you finished there? So let's have a look at your breasts. And feeding's been OK. There hasn't yes. been a problem, no. obviously. And the nipples look... Nice and healthy, not cracked or anything. No, I, Did you have any problem initially? I never have. I don't Fine. Really, I don't really They're nice and soft bruises. at the moment, having just fed, aren't they? Okay, that's fine. And you didn't get any infections or anything? No. That's lovely. I'm just okay. Right, now we'll do your internal examination and just right. check everything's returned to normal. Okay? okay. Yeah, fine. Hello, Emma. Nice to see you again. Yes, you too. Please, please have a seat. We met a little while ago, and we looked at your x-rays. Mm -hmm. And you had a look at your baby on x-ray. That's right. But this is just to confirm what we've discussed, mm -hmm. that you have a normal-sized baby, mm -hmm. but unfortunately have a very small pelvis. Uh, my recommendation is that we deliver you by cesarean section. You will won't be able to deliver this baby vaginally. Right. It's going to be a very tight fit. The only real option, I think, and the only safe way of delivering you is by cesarean section. You're 38 weeks now, and your baby's quite mature. 
and I would suggest that we do your cesarean section next week. What right. do you feel about that? He's going to be right, so... <laughs> How much do you know about epidurals? A little bit. I understand the anatomy and, and what an epidural does. Right. An epidural is very effective and, and very successful. And the great advantage of being awake, as you know, and you've expressed the wish to have a wide awake cesarean section, is that you're in control of your own respiratory function and you see the baby very soon after delivery. Mm -hmm. And if we're to look at bonding, that starts at the time when you see your baby. In fact, it starts with pregnancy, but it's reinforced when you see your baby soon after delivery. Right. It's a final day. We should soon have a baby out. I'm just going to go very quickly through the sequences of events this morning. And essentially what's going to happen is that in a short time, you're going to be in theater. And John's, John Griffith's going to insert an epidural. Yeah. OK, Emma. You just feel a bit of pushing now. It shouldn't be painful. If it's sore at all, let me know. OK. Try to keep nice and still for me, Emma. OK, Emma, you're doing really well. Very good. That's it. Almost finished now, Emma. We're in the right place. We've just got to put the catheter in now, OK? <laughs> And then we'll strap that up your back as I've explained. And once it's happy that the epidural is effective, we'll then have you on the operating table and I'll paint your tummy with an, an antiseptic solution. Solution. It may feel a wee bit cold, but should she feel this, John? Feel a little bit of it, especially up towards the top. I feel that. Okay. You feel the touch, right. that's right. It won't take the sense of touch away completely. Right. We'll have a series of gowns across your tummy and a little bar across way just below your chin so you don't really see exactly what I'm doing, but you can see both Philippa and I and my assistant. And um, you'll hear some sounds. We'll be communicating, we'll be talking to you. Yes. You feel sort of funny movements and things being moved around that. that quite belong to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lovely. Take some big breaths, Emma. That's great. You're really well. That's fine. And then you'll hear sucking sounds. The sucker will be on just to drain the fluid away that comes from the uterus. And the baby will be delivered soon after. Oh, but we're almost there. Good. <laughs> okay, just I just help the baby's head out Just now. help the baby's head out gently. Mark. Okay, here it comes. Here it comes. Lots and lots of lovely hair. Lots of lovely hair. Look. Look. See? Look. It's a haircut. You have a hairdresser in. There we are. Can you see? Have a look. A lovely little ear. Okay. Hi. Okay. It's a lovely little face. Just going to get the cord around the baby's neck. There. There we are. Here we come. Here we come. There we go. Look. Oh. Look. Nice there we big are. Hands. Hi. Oh. <laughs> Look what you have. Little lady. Oh. There we have a little baby. Great. <laughs> And it's making noise. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I've, I've emptied no, it. That's all right. I've emptied it, so you won't right. get squashed. It's been in the business too long. Yeah. Yep. There you are. <laughs> OK. <laughs> it's gone down. <laughs> there you are. Oh, oh boy, what a screamer. <laughs> what a screamer. <laughs> right, I'm going to deliver your placenta. Can you take the sucker off? Okay, she looked like my sister's little ones, didn't she? Other ears, like that. They're like my ears. <laughs> <laughs> You've been inside all the time. Yeah, such a cool family. Yeah. See how long you are. You're going to be short like your mummy, aren't you? Yeah. Tiddle me. She's got long legs, long feet. Amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. And, and I'll pop in to see you tomorrow. Okay? She's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs>
Hi. I didn't expect to see her head born like that. It was lovely. <laughs> Right then, let's have a look at this this scar. Watch yourself as you go back. Mm -hmm. That's brilliant. That's really nice. Yeah, it's a good one, isn't it? Yeah, it really is nice. Yeah, nice and straight. Just a bit itchy. Is it? it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it will be a little bit to start off with. And sometimes you do get a little bit of tenderness, you know, somewhere along. But that should clear right. up. That should be fine. And what about any numbness that I'm feeling? Yeah, about? sometimes you get a little bit of numbness, sort of in isolated areas. But again, that'll, that'll come back as right. the nerves sort themselves out. Honestly. And will it will it shrink <laughs> in any way? Will it? Um, a little bit, yeah. I mean, and you'll be able to see it. But because it's in the bikini line, then, you right. know, it shouldn't be a problem at all. It shouldn't be a problem. But that looks lovely. Good. Really nice. Yeah. There's 14 months in between Olivia and Antonella, and there'll be 13 months between Antonella and this one. We really have been singularly inept in the family planning <laughs> department. So much for the uh, assisted conception first time round. Just need to leave you off for 20 minutes, okay, and then you can get up and adopt whichever position you find most comfortable. Unless you want to stand, it's not a war on headaches. Labour began at four in the morning with contractions coming about every 10 minutes. The contractions gradually speeded up. The waters hadn't broken at this stage. About seven centimetres. Um. So, shall we, can we talk to these membranes or do you want to leave them? Mm. If you're getting on fairly well, we can bear. Shall we leave them? You could leave them. Let's just leave it. Maybe you can do it again in another okay. half an hour or so. Yeah. Okay. And if we haven't progressed, then. Right, right. Yeah. They're beautifully bulging. Keep using the gas, use the gas all the way through. Keep going. That's it, keep going. Come on, and again. Well done. <sighs> slow it down as the contraction goes. You don't need to stop altogether, just slow your breathing down. Just slow it down. That's it. Till it comes to the stop. Well done. That's another one over. Him. Yeah. That's excellent. Keep it going. Keep it going. Well done. Well done. Okay, your waters have just popped. Yeah. Do right? you feel that? Yes. Oh, oh. Won't be long now. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. We can see quite a lot of this baby's head. That's beautiful. Come on. Excellent. On the other side. That's lovely. That's lovely. Oh. 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 Long, strong pushes with this one. We'll have your baby out. It looks like <laughs> That's brilliant. It's coming. Lovely. Take a deep breath. 
takes all the weight off you so you, you can get into any position you want easily because you're supported by the water. And the water's warm so that relieves any pains you've got in your back or your stomach. It's definitely really good pain relief. You can notice the difference as soon as you get in the water. You can concentrate more on what you're supposed to be doing because you haven't got to worry so much about the pain. This one goes, let's turn around and tell what to deliver, okay? Okay. So just 
Just pop a little bit more warm in there. Are you holding on to that um, ring for dear life? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I like the frogs. All right. <laughs> okay. Concentrate. No. Concentrate. <laughs> Smashing. Keep blowing. Hands down for me. Hands down. Hands down. Hands down. Hands down. Hands down. Take, the, take the baby up, you know? Oh. 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 Hello. Oh, sweet. Boy. Oh, sweet. Good boy. No, it's a girl. Oh, yeah. oh, it's girly, girly. Oh, hello, sweet. I think, anyway. <laughs> hello. You know, tell me if it is or not. Please. I did sense. <laughs> there you 
It sounds was quite tough. Yes, it is. That's Russian. Hello, darling. <laughs>